Good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. So thanks so much for joining us for our September episode of the Eloqua User Group. So this month is all about Eloqua apps and connectors. Essentially looking at ways that we can enhance engagement across our various campaigns uh, with the contacts. So let's dive in and have a look at our agenda and we'll get this show on the road. So what's our plan for the next 60 minutes? First of all, welcome and a little bit of housekeeping. And we have a couple of questions that have been submitted. So we'd like to get to those uh, this evening. We then wanted to present with you some of the apps that we love and why we love them and uh, a little bit about how they work. And also looking at connectors. And first of all, is there a difference? Apps, connectors, is it all the same thing? And then looking at always on campaigns that can in some ways potentially behave a little bit like an app in some way. Not an app, but simply an eloquent campaign. But potentially behave a bit like an app. Um, then also Eloqua 23C release, just a little bit of a recap, but we do have a really cool update for our Zoom client users. So if you're using Zoom and Eloqua, we have some exciting news for you. So uh, stick around for that one at the end with uh, along with Q&A, but as you know, always ask questions throughout. There's no, no need to wait till the end. So meet the team. Uh, my name is Derek Bell. I'm your host for today's uh, webinar. I've got Adrian Jones on the line, who's our CEO and founder. And Adrian's going to be talking to us a little bit about one of the apps that we wanted to uh, share with you and potentially get some feedback on and see if there's some interest. So we'll uh, share that one with you. And also Sean Camilla, one of our account directors. So Sean's joining us as well this evening. So thank you, guys. Um, all right, housekeeping. So as you know, if you attend regularly, we use Zoom to host and record our webinars. Uh, replays are always available on our blog and they should be there generally within a week, the, the live session, but you'll receive an email letting you know once it's ready. Then obviously feel free to ask questions. As I said, at any point, you don't need to wait till the end. So please use the Q&A function. Uh, that's part of the reason why Adrian and Sean are on the line to help me manage those. Just keep in mind they're visible to everybody so everybody can see those. Uh, if you wanted to use the chat function, you could also do that to ask a private question if you felt that was more appropriate. So please, please feel free to do any of those. All right, let's dive straight in and look at your questions and our answers. So the first one comes from Danny, uh, who's in the US and is a marketing lead analyst. Uh, and his organization is currently using Eloqua. And one of the questions he raises was in the context of Tableau. And so at the moment, they're not using a CRM to integrate with their particular platform, um, but is looking at some way of trying to get contact data into Eloqua more easily uh, and probably in a more compliant way uh, than simply Excel spreadsheets. Uh, which can be obviously a little bit of a security risk with personally identifiable information and all those sorts of things floating around the business. So there are two questions here. Danny asks, is there a connection between Tableau and Eloqua? Now, a quick Google search reveals that there certainly are a range of different ways that you can connect Tableau to Eloqua. That's always a good thing. Generally speaking, the construct would be Tableau to a CRM, CRM to Eloqua. That probably would be more of a best practice type of approach. But as Danny's articulated here, there is no CRM in this particular scenario. Um, but there would be a way to do it. Now, the other thing that Danny asked about was secure file transfer, transfer or SFTP. Now, there are certainly some advantages to SFTP from a security point of view. Um, it, uh, it essentially relies on, and this is something that I thought this is good for everybody to be aware of, if you have data that is able to be uh, spat out from a particular platform, if it's a cloud-based platform, that makes it a lot easier. SFTP is able to essentially, using Eloqua to make a call, it can pick up a file, transfer it in a very secure fashion, bring it into Eloqua, and then digest it. And you can set schedules for that. So it could be hourly or daily or weekly or whatever the time frame is that suits your organization best. And obviously, probably... Delta updates are the smarter way to do that versus bringing entire databases over uh, in that sort of process. So SFTP is something that we have set up for a range of clients. Sometimes it's, it may be an obscure database. They only want information from it. Maybe it's only once a month or it can be more frequently, as I said. But generally, if it's more frequently, it's usually more so aligned with the CRM potentially and other major systems. But SFTP is very doable. Uh, and it can be a slightly more economical approach to do it without sacrificing any security. Um, the Tableau 
type of construct typically means there's a third party in between. So there's Tableau, there'll be a third party organization that develops an app and then there's your instance of Eloqua. So that third party organization that's sitting in the middle, if it's a pre-built app that you might buy, and this is kind of generic across all apps or many apps, is that there would be some sort of a recurring fee for that particular app and they may adjust those fees based on volume and usage and all those sorts of things. So a lot of variables involved there. The SFTP, less variables, and typically it's your technology, your hardware to your, well, to Eloqua being your instance of Eloqua. So, Danny, I can see you're on the line there, so I, I hope that's helped answer your question. Um, it is fortunate as I've got Adrian on the line and and, um, and Sean tonight. So if there's any other questions you've got, please use the Q&A, or maybe we can reach out and have a, a slightly more detailed conversation with you, because... When I spoke with that technical team, there were a few more questions that they presented. Thank you for coming back to me, by the way. That did help me give some get some context to help sort of put this answer together for you. But uh, happy to take that further if you'd like to uh, to do that. So um, uh, Sean can probably reach out to you tomorrow uh, just to follow up and see if there are any other questions you'd like to, to look at. Now, the next question came from Cindy, and Cindy asked the question. Cindy is from the US also and is a marketing automation manager. This look, this is a reasonably common question from especially from Salesforce CRM and Eloqua clients who are working, you know, integrated. The scenario, as you can see on the screen, is the same person, John Smith, same mobile phone or cell phone number, but two different email addresses. Same person, but two different email addresses. So for those that have been using Eloqua for a while, we know that that is interpreted as two unique individuals because the email address is the unique identifier as stored in Eloqua. So Cindy then asked the question, okay, so I've got these two people. What happens if I'm a Salesforce user, I, de I identify these people and I merge them? In the cleanup at the end of the day, when I now in the CRM only have, say, John Smith at Gmail, because that's my master account that I want to keep, what does that then look like over in Eloqua? So I think thought I pretty much knew the outcome of what this would be, but I thought I should just do a test. So I created a little fake email account for myself, Derek A at Gmail and Derek A at Hotmail, both sitting in a CRM platform, Salesforce CRM platform, different IDs uh, based on those. I let those sync over to Eloqua. Uh, again, Eloqua IDs are, are different. The Pearl, I thought I'd just out of curiosity, have a look and see what happened to the Pearl uh, in that particular process. And uh, so that was before the merge. So before the merge, it replicated as you would expect it to do. So what happened after the merge? So after the merge, we're left with a single contact within the CRM platform. And in this example, I chose Gmail as the master record for CRM. And um, what remains over in Eloqua is the same information. There was no change, by the way, to the Eloqua ID or Pearls in this instance. It remained the same. I was just putting... We place emphasis on remains in Eloqua. So there are a couple of things at play here. One is we need to understand that Eloqua, in essence, they don't make it hard for you to, to delete a contact, but they don't make it easy. And the reason they don't make it easy is because there's commercial value in your database, okay? They make you go through a process. As you know, you find the list, you export them, and then you import them, and you can batch delete people in that way. An administrator can delete a contact one at a time sort of exercise, but um, but it's not the easiest of things to do, and that's for a commercial reason. So how do we manage this particular situation? And I would need to do further testing, but I believe this is similar with Microsoft Dynamics. Oracle Sales Cloud, et cetera. It's not unique to the Salesforce CRM space. Speaking with our tech team, there are ways that we can look at this. Now, specifically for those Salesforce CRM and Eloqua clients, the integration does enable you to identify a contact or lead from the CRM that has been deleted, which then means we could tag the remaining contact in Eloqua. So in this example, it would be the Derek A at hotmail.com we could tag that particular contact in some way to identify it as a contact that has in fact been deleted from the CRM platform. 
Now, it's not going to automatically delete Derek at Hotmail. Uh, you're still going to have to go through a process of exporting them or deleting them or an administrator deleting one at a time. Um, but that would at least enable you to flag those particular individuals. So that's just a matter of a little bit of updating uh, and work to be done uh, with the integration between the two platforms and potentially a program to program Canvas to help sort those people and put them in a place where they're easily found so that you can delete them or do whatever you feel you need to do with them. Uh, at that particular point. So, Cindy, I hope that's helpful. Uh, looks like Cindy's not on the line with us, but hopefully she catches that in the replay. But otherwise, I'll go back to her via email. Good questions. Thank you so much, Danny. Thank you so much, Cindy. I think they uh, were great questions. Um, quite a little bit of investigation and thinking. So thank you for that. Now, if you have any questions, please go ahead and submit them. You can see we do look at them and we do try to answer them where possible. So please feel free to load your questions each month. All right, apps we love and why we love them. Okay, so let's dive in. I thought, first of all, let's have a look at, at what is an app or why apps necessarily. So it, it was interesting just doing a little bit of research and, and sort of thinking back. The term app as we use it today, um, based on this uh, website called Tech Terms, which is like a, a big dictionary definition of geeky technology words, are telling us that it was popularized by Apple uh, when they created the first app store in 2008. And I was thinking, wow, is it that recent? I thought it was maybe later or earlier than that. But anyway, and so that term has kind of become a very generic term uh, that's been used to apply to apps. Now, of course, they're talking mobile phones and we're talking Eloqua. But yeah, we have now the Google App Store. We have you know, Oracle has their Oracle Cloud Marketplace, which is an, effectively an app store. So the term app is pretty generic. It's it's not um, doesn't mean one thing necessarily. So let's talk about apps. So as I said, Oracle have their uh, App Cloud Marketplace, and um, where you can find loads of different apps. Um, now they can be used across your campaign canvas. Uh, they can also be used on the program canvas. I probably should add that there. Email and landing pages. So one of the big changes for those that have been around Eloqua for a while, going back to Eloqua 9 or the old Program Builder platform, one of the big changes from Program Builder to Program Canvas was the ability for that new technology platform to incorporate apps. We couldn't put apps onto the old Program Builder, but you can add apps to Program Canvas, for instance. So one reason for, for that change. So most of those apps, or not most, sorry, some of those apps are developed by the Oracle Marketing Apps team. So it is a team within Eloqua who developed them. So if we take Zoom, for example, the very first Zoom connector or app between Zoom and Eloqua was developed by Oracle for their Eloqua clients. And the news I've got is that release two is almost available. Uh, as well. And again, that's been developed by the Oracle team as well. But others are developed by the providers. On24, for instance, developed a pretty cool app that they use to connect the two platforms. It's it's quite amazing in relation to the way it works. So they can be created by a whole range of different organizations, but you just need to look at the detail when you, when you see them. So what I wanted to do here was just sort of group a few of them uh, for you. On24, from a webinar point of view, is probably one of the richest connections that we would see um, when you put it against, say, Zoom, uh, WebEx, or Citrix with GoToWebinar. The On24 connection is probably the richest, and the richest by that I mean in the flow of data that is able to move between the two platforms is probably the greatest with the On24 platform. Then Zoom could be better there are some cool things that it does but it could be better so this next version is going to be interesting to have a look and and that would kind of apply really to to webex and citrix as well the key thing that people are really looking for sometimes is being able to bring back in poll information so if you're presenting polls or surveys during a live webinar and capturing responses uh, you'd like to be able to bring those responses in associate them to the individual and then actually capture them to potentially store them in eloqua so in some cases, you have to do that manually because it's not possible. With On24, for example, that's fine. You can bring all of that data in and the system will manage that process for you. So it all depends on what your objectives are and what you're trying to achieve. Now, one of the other apps that I wanted to include here was the Oracle app, the external activity creator. You might think, well, why would I add that to these? Well, these are all things that are happening externally to Eloqua, all these webinars. And so the external activity creator is perfect combination to go through with that. And you can use that on the campaign canvas. So 
So with each of these different apps, once your webinar has concluded, you can use these apps to query, did that person attend or were they a no-show? And they will obviously go in one of two directions on your canvas. You can then push them through the external activity creator to then flag them as external activities of attended or no-show to your particular webinar. Now, the benefit of doing that, a couple of benefits, one is that information is visible on the prospect profiler. So if you have Eloqua's prospect profiler embedded in your CRM, means your CRM users will be able to see that information. They'll be able to know if the person attended or was a no-show. You can also then segment by it really easily. So in segments, you can pull in your external activities and say, give me everybody that attended this webinar on this date. Nice and simple. No need to be uploading Excel spreadsheets, post event, all that sort of stuff. So there really are some advantages. And so the external activity creator is a nice, easy way to do that. And you can automate that on the campaign canvas. All right, so data cleansing, asset refinement and data. So four more apps that I wanted to sort of make you aware of. The contact washing machine is probably one of the most popular ones um, that we see typically uh, when we have a new client come on board with Eloqua and I'm prepping for uh, your training, whether it's on site or via webinar, I always make sure the contact washing machine is loaded and, and available on their instance. It really is a brilliant little piece of technology. It's from the team at, at Oracle who have developed that one. It helps you cleanse the data. It helps you put text into proper case or uppercase if you need it. Uh, it can perform mathematical functions. It can move co uh, data from one field to another field. Uh, there really are a whole swag of things that it can do. Often I find that it's not until you've got a business problem that needs a solution that you often go looking for these apps. So what I want to try and do today is make you aware of some of this functionality. So if, if you have a business problem in a few weeks or a month, you think, well, hang on a minute, maybe there's an app that can help us do that. The form submit action is one of those. So what that enables you to do is to take advantage of all those processing steps that you're familiar with on your forms and actually trigger that from a campaign canvas. So one really simple scenario might be that your team are used to receiving form notification emails. That's great. But you want to do something from a campaign canvas. If somebody has opened something or they've clicked on something, for instance, you want to make sure that the owner of that contact can receive a notification email. Well, that's fine. You can do that. So we can create the form as you would normally. Um, and then you can use the form submit action on the canvas, the campaign canvas, to then trigger that form submit, which as a result will send the notification email to the particular individual. So just one example, Litmus. Now Litmus is a pretty popular platform uh, for most digital marketers, especially email marketers, obviously. And uh, so what the Litmus app does, it brings all of that functionality from Litmus that you're familiar with uh, and literally makes it available to you within the email design editor. So you don't have to leave the platform. You can stay within Eloqua, push it out to Litmus, get all your results, et cetera, and see that information directly in the platform, in the Eloqua platform. The only downside I think to this app is, which I think is a bit of an unfortunate limitation by Litmus, is you have to be using their corporate or their top end solution. So if you're a small agency or a small organization and you've only got five or so users, I don't think that would qualify you as being a corporate sort of client. I'm not familiar with their tiers, but the high, the highest tier, the most expensive solution that they offer is the only one that integrates with Eloqua. I, I kind of think they're there. It seems a silly decision. But anyway, that's their decision they've made. So that's how that particular app works. So the app itself is free, the connection between Eloqua and Litmus, but obviously you need to have a Litmus subscription in order to, to use that functionality. Now, the Oracle Date app is another really good one. You may be familiar with the compare date function on the campaign canvas. Very helpful with events, making sure you're not sending invitations to people after an event has happened and all those sorts of things. That's different, okay? So the Oracle Date app, what this one does, it enables you to interrogate data, specifically date formatted data that is in a date field on a contact or customer or custom object, I believe. And, and so by that, I mean, it can't just be a text field that has a date manually entered into it. The field must be of type date so that it can interpret it correctly. So some use cases for that could be, let's say you're having a campaign and that campaign is designed to reach people before 
perhaps a contract expiry or maybe it's a membership expiry date. And that membership expiry date or the contract expiry date is actually stored on their contact. So it's a fixed date and only changes every 12 months, for example. So what we can do is we can interrogate using the Oracle Date app. We can, through the process of the campaign, we can ask the question, is it greater or less than 30 days to their expiry date? Yes or no. And so depending on the outcome, you would continue the conversation in one of two ways. It can be really helpful from that point of view if you have specific dates that you need to work on and need to adjust your messaging in that context. So the Oracle Date app. Now, all of those are free. The Litmus one requires a subscription, but actually the Contact Washing Machine, the Form Submit app and the Oracle Date app are all Oracle apps and they're all free. So you can easily add those. You will need to have Eloqua Administrator access with API privileges in order to do that, but that um, all administrators generally have API uh, approval, so that's easy to do. All right, the next one we want to show you is a little bit more from an omni-channel point of view, kind of again looking outwards from the platform. So Motiva AI, these guys are really interesting, and if you've not heard of Motiva AI, I'd really encourage you to have a little uh, look at what they do. So, and you'll notice they've got 13 reviews there, and those 13 reviews are five, which is the highest ranking you can get. So that, I thought that was interesting in and of itself. We've been talking to these guys for quite a while. Uh, we've got a couple of clients who are kind of working together with Motiva on a few different projects and doing different things. But essentially what they do is they've recently expanded their functionality. But the the key thing that I love about their um their app is its ability to look at your segment or your database to help you produce smarter segments based on additional information it's able to get and understand uh, from internet service providers and others. So when we think about hard bounces and we think about how many times a person has been emailed and they've not opened an email versus those who have been emailed X amount of times and are opening and are engaging emails. So whereas you may go into Eloqua now and sort of play with segments and apply different filters to arrive at that type of a super engaged audience or a less engaged audience, Motiva will do that for you in many ways. And it can actually do it while a campaign is in motion, which is kind of cool. So have a little look at that one. They also do subject line optimization, send time optimization, a whole range of other things that you would sort of incorporate from an AI point of view, uh, but certainly worth having a look at. The next one or the next two essentially do exactly the same thing. Um, we find the only clients we have that really use both of these are probably universities, but most other clients are either using one or the other because it really depends on where their audience is at and where their audience plays. They both work essentially in the same, the same way. Uh, you must obviously pay Facebook or Microsoft being LinkedIn in order to run the campaigns, which are the lead gen form type of campaigns. What the app does for you is it automatically brings any of that form submission data directly into Eloqua. So in the past, if you have been running paid campaigns with either of these two platforms, but not using the app, you've had to obviously access uh, an Excel file or a CSV file at the back end of LinkedIn and at the back end of Facebook, then you take that CSV file, upload it into Eloqua and then run your campaign. The nice thing about that is it re removes any need for data flowing in Excel spreadsheets, which is always a good thing. Uh, and we move a data directly from Facebook or LinkedIn directly into Eloqua onto your campaign canvas. And on your canvas, it looks just like a segment. It's green. It's right at the top of the canvas. And that's your entry point to a particular campaign. All right, Cvent. So for those who may be running larger type of events, you'd probably be very familiar with Cvent as an organization. So these guys do pretty amazing things. This is not just ticketing for your event. Your Cvent lets you give an experience where people can book their flights, their accommodation, their airport to hotel transfers. It, it's quite an amazing construct or, or service that Cvent offer. It's not just ticketing and QR codes and all that sort of stuff and name tags that you see at conferences. There's so much more that it can do. And so the, in, the integration or the app enables you to bring all the comms side of that into Eloqua. So you know who's registered and you know who they are, have they opened emails, have they not, all that sort of fun stuff that you would expect to be able to do. So Cvent is a pretty cool thing to look at. 
Video is obviously another big one. These are a couple of the more popular ones. You've got Brightcove and Vidyard uh, that enable you to store your video content on and do things with. Um, as you know, you can use Vimeo and YouTube natively within the Eloqua platform. These, uh, these apps from these two organizations enable you to use your content stored in their platforms directly within your Eloqua campaigns as well. There are a couple of, uh, well, more than a couple, but a number of apps that we use ourselves, some that we have our clients using, and some that we have seen in use uh, in other locations as well. So we, yeah, have a look at those if there's anything there. There are over 300 or so plus apps, I think, available on the app store or the uh, Oracle Cloud Marketplace, I should call it. So please go and have a look. And, and uh, you can easily have a, a look and find uh, something that might help. Now, where do you find them? I keep telling you to go and have a look, but where do you find them? Well, one of the easiest places to start is to go to the Help Center. So once you're in the Help Center, uh, you're able to access uh, more information. They just give you a little bit of detail about, you know, what are the apps, what do they do, et cetera. Then you can click here on Oracle Cloud Marketplace. And here you are, Shazam. So once you get here, what you've got to remember, this is the Oracle Cloud Marketplace. It's not just the Eloqua Cloud Marketplace. So what you'll want to do is click on products, uh, go over to CX Oracle Marketing, give that a second, uh, and at least Eloqua is at the top of the list. So then you can tick the box, and now you're looking just at the Eloqua uh, solutions that are available. There's a few I shared with you. So the the Date app, WebEx, uh, Facebook Litmus, Contact Washing Machine, Brightcove. So there'll be others there uh, that you may find uh, and be familiar with. So there's, oh, there you go. There's 274. I think I, did, I, think I said 300. So there's 274 of those to look at and play with. So yeah, have a little look around and um, I'm sure you'll find something that you may not have been aware of. I've certainly had clients who weren't aware they're using another platform of some sort and they're like oh my gosh what actually hang on can we connect that that's even better so yeah go and have a look you'll be surprised what you might find all right connectors and what's the difference what's an app what's a connector well as i dug around and <laughs> looked at this one a little bit closer uh, it became pretty clear to me that uh, there is no real agreement uh, around the words app and the word connectors um, but let's look at connectors. So long before there were apps, and now we know based on that information, it was kind of around that 2008 timeframe. Um, you know, before then, El Eloqua had connectors and had connectors for a long time. And it's only been probably since the Ar Oracle acquisition, if I think about it, um, that we started calling them apps as well. Connectors, apps, is there really a difference? The easy way I look at it is an app is something that you can go to that Oracle Cloud Marketplace. It's an app. You can click on it and kind of install it. I say here one-click installation, sort of. You do that through the App Store. A connector is something that is maybe not always available on the App Store, but is still kind of app-ish in the way that it works, if that's even a word. And uh, but is a packaged product that that somebody has produced, someone like a Marketing Cube or maybe even Oracle or a third-party vendor of some sort. It's not something they advertise there, but they advertise on their own website, etc. And so it becomes a connector to connect their platform uh, with your instance of Eloqua. So. Is there a real difference? You know, look, it may be semantics, but let's have a look at uh, one example that I would sort of throw under the connect uh, category for Marketing Cube, and that is the Marketing Cube SMS function. And so this is, um, and we're, we're uh, at fault of calling it an app at some point, but probably arguably it isn't technically an app, as I said. But at the end of the day, what this uh, connector, the SMS connector does, it's two-way communication. It can be one way if that's all you need, but it can be two-way communication. It's great for event reminders. Some of you on the call today would have experienced this if you requested an SMS reminder. Uh, it would have been the Marketing Cube SMS connector that would have sent you that reminder. On the left-hand side, though, is the Oracle Eloqua uh, SMS function which is referred to as an add-on. So that's, um, and that's more of a commercial term <laughs> than it is anything else. It's what's called on the price list, essentially. It's an add-on. 
So the other thing is that it's native to the Eloqua application. So just the sending emails and building landing pages and forms is native to the Eloqua platform. SMS is also native to the Eloqua platform, but it is an add-on. So it is an extra dollar fee that you need extra subscription uh, in order to have that function. There are monthly fees that go with that. And then obviously you need to provide indication of how many SMSs you plan to send, which then will impact the, the per uh, SMS send value or cost that is on charge to you as well. So two slightly different things, both giving you SMS capability, but uh, the pricing structure and all that kind of stuff is quite different uh, in relation to the way they work. So uh, one's an add-on and the other is a connector. Another way to, this is just to give you an idea of how the Marketing Cube SMS function works. So here it is sitting right here. And so this is looking at uh, registrations coming through using shared list functionality from the registration point where you offer the ability to send a reminder for an event. Uh, we then just double check to make sure we have a mobile phone number. We then send the SMS, uh, run it through an external activity to record the fact that an, an external activity has taken place. Uh, and then down to sending out a reminder email. So that takes in a few things. What's not displayed in that photo or that image though, is other areas of the SMS app that enable you to look at incoming SMSs. So if you've got a, a QR code on a billboard somewhere and you want people to be able to scan that and launch an SMS, that would be considered an incoming SMS. You might have a mobile phone number uh, listed or a cell phone number listed in a document that people can message. That would be incoming, for example. You can also look at link hits. So if you're sending out SMSs with URLs in them and you want to look to see if they've been clicked on, you can do that. And then decision step is looking at those inbound SMSs and have you received responses. So if you think about sending out an SMS, so let's say it's for an event and you say to people, would you like a coffee or an orange juice for breakfast or with breakfast? So they have to respond with either coffee or orange juice. And so they reply, we can then interrogate that response. We can look for the keyword of orange or coffee, and then whatever we want to do with that particular information, we can progress from there. There's a whole range of ways you can use SMS in your function or in your different campaigns, whether it be an actual proactive outbound marketing campaign, uh, or potentially simply as an event reminder, like we do uh, at Marketing Cube, for example. There it is sitting right there. Okay. So what I wanted to share with you now, and this is where I'll just introduce Adrian here quickly to talk this one through, is something that we're playing with here at Marketing Cube, which has been something our clients have been asking about. So Adrian, can you talk to us about WhatsApp and what we can expect from that? Sure. Thanks, Derek. And thanks for having me along. So yeah, just to quickly talk to you guys about WhatsApp um, and a WhatsApp connector. So the idea is basically that it opens up a whole new channel of communication. There are 2.78 billion WhatsApp users and it's rapidly growing. Um, and interestingly, also it's expanding rapidly overseas, like in yeah, in various different countries and globally. So uh, the take up in some countries is much bigger than others. And so that means it can be a very attractive channel. Uh, so you can see here um, in the US, it's about 90 million, the UK, 40 million. So yeah, the expansion's significant. And as we kind of run through these countries, you can see the number of WhatsApp users. So uh, why is it such an attractive channel? Well, the connector and what WhatsApp enables you to do is very similar to your SMS messages and a lot of that functionality that Derek just spoke about with regards to SMS. Uh, but making it available to in Eloqua, we can uh, essentially send a predefined message and bulk broadcast it. And the beauty of the WhatsApp message is that you can send a longer message. So obviously, you have that SMS restriction in terms of numbers of characters. And if you send uh, large messages, then there are more than one SMS send. Uh, so we have much more character length to work with um, than you do in the SMS message. You can do the same personalization. So we can bring all the personalization into the message. Uh, we can add images and we can add video. Uh, the limit on video is about 16 megabytes, which is 90 seconds to three minutes of video. And another beautiful touch as well is you can have quick reply 
button so that you can have that set to your contacts say yes i can come or no i can't for example or any links that are trackable that can go to eloqua landing pages or to your website those responses can also then prompt autoresponder templates and targeted and then be able to send those responses back in that same whatsapp kind of conversation, if you like. And again, another added beauty of that is that a conversation is treated as that by WhatsApp and there's no additional charge for 24 hours. So you can set up a little sequence, if you like, of communications, um, like a little Q&A. Um, and that could be um, you know, something that could drive kind of some effective messages and think about you know, an event or think about channeling down or narrowing down somebody in terms of a kind of what they would like to hear more about, for example. So we're starting this process with a POC, essentially connecting and helping you to connect your meta on your WhatsApp account. We'll help you with the setup. We'll help you with the initial campaigns uh, and then obviously test and understand those use cases so we can further develop the app and integrate it more with Eloqua and into the campaign canvas. Thanks, Adrian. And so if I understand correctly then, so... Just as right now, let's say we send a few emails to somebody and we don't get any response, like maybe they're not opening anything. Is it feasible then if we have a mobile phone number, we could potentially then route the messaging to move into WhatsApp? Yes. It would to SMS, right? Exactly. Exactly the same. So essentially, yes, you would just have that, essentially have that um, audience, um, route them to SMS, just decide the template and the personalization that would go within that um, WhatsApp message. And um, and then it would come, it would hit, hit those mobiles in their WhatsApp coming from your brand and with your specific message and template. Mm, cool. All right. Thank you very much. So that is a proof of concept that we're running or a beta type of program at the moment. So we'll uh, include some links in our post-event communications for today's webinar that if you're at all interested, uh, would like to know a little bit more about that and, you know, cost and duration and all those sorts of usual questions that we want to know the answers to, that we'd be more than happy to, to have a chat with you uh, on that one. So keep an eye out for your emails on that one. All right. So the next thing we wanted to do was look at the some campaigns where they could potentially you could say they kind of behave like an app. And so what I want to do is just show you three uh, that I have uh, been looking at. So the first one is a client or if you're a university, a uh, student testimonial gathering type of exercise. And so what, uh, what this does essentially, and we do this in a few ways, but effectively what you're looking at is an eloquent landing page with an eloquent form. It may look vaguely familiar to you, but this may be throwing you just a little bit. Um, so what this is, it's uh, it's something that we use at Marketing Cube, and we would uh, usually have a verbal conversation with a customer and asking them, would they be open to providing a testimonial of some sort about their interaction with Marketing Cube? And actually, Sean was suggesting we should send this to everybody that attends the user group. And I said, well, yeah, we should. So again, we'll include the link uh, for you for this one as well. So uh, keep an eye out for it. But you've got to play, okay? <laughs> if you get it, you've got to play. Really simple, email address, first name, last name, company name, and then the testimonial, and, and that kind of behaves as you would expect. It gives people room to, to play. But what they can do here is actually upload a profile photograph. And so what we've done is we've got a demonstration down here. Here's an example of a testimonial given to us by a client. This is real. Uh, this is the, a marketing director here in Australia at DocuSign. And uh, so she's sort of talked a little bit about working with Marketing Cube. Now, that's not actually required in this instance. You'll notice that this information here is required. This is not. It can be made required, but we decided not to because we thought some people might be a bit bashful and not want to use a photograph. Okay, that's fine. But once they go through the process and we know that they haven't provided a photograph, that's where the campaign canvas kicks in and we can look at that and we send them a note saying, thank you so much for submitting your testimonial. We really appreciate it. But how about uploading a photograph? You would love to do that. So if they click on that, they'll come back to another page that in this case is trimmed down, really just, I think, is email address even, but with the opportunity to upload their photograph, just in case. So we'll ask them anyway. And so that's kind of that whole process is just encapsulated and sitting there as an always on campaign. So as I said, it's not really an app, but it just kind of could behave arguably like one. It's always on. 
It's there, it's available. We have the ability for our sales team to drop people into a campaign in the CRM platform and that links directly to the segment in Eloqua and pushes them through, et cetera, and off it goes. So that's just one, one example. Another one I wanted to show uh, was in relation to profile updates. This one, you will think, well, hang on a minute, Derek, that is seriously way too many uh, questions on a form. And yes, it absolutely is. You can see we even address that here uh, on the form. If you look at the footer of any of our emails, there are two links. There's one that takes you off to our subscription center and the other one that takes you to a place called Update My Details. Now, you've got to remember that we're talking primarily to people just like you, marketers. And so here, what I'm trying to do on the left-hand side is actually explain what the logic is with this particular form. Now, if you reach this form from the email, um, your 90% of it is actually going to be pre-populated. It'll know your email address. Uh, you can put a new one in here if that's why you're wanting to update your details. Everything else, what we know, will actually pre-populate. So what looks like a bit of an overwhelming form, it's not really. And you'll notice that the only required pieces of information are, in fact, the email address, first name, and your organization's name. That's it. Uh, so it really is designed for people just to be able to update their details should they choose to do so. So you can design that in any sort of way. But that particular landing page and that construct we've just had running forever, essentially. Uh, and it gets used occasionally, not a ton, but it does get used occasionally uh, by clients. All right. And then subscriptions, of course, keeping people engaged. So the other great thing about your subscription center is thinking about your less active contacts, right? Those who maybe need to go into a re-engagement campaign of some sort. And quite often incentivizing people to to click on anything, uh, especially in a group or a cohort that have not been over, overly engaged, you've got to offer them something. And so a subscription center can be one way to really give them the power to tell you what they're actually interested in, again, so that you can hopefully send more relevant communications to them. So this is the Marketing Cube uh, subscription center. As you can see, we capture things like your interests. We offer specific subscriptions. Uh, and a little bit of profile information about you, essentially. So yeah, nice and simple. Uh, there are a whole very there are a whole range of ways that you can present this information to people. This is just one example uh, that we wanted to share with you. So hopefully that gives you some ideas. Okay, so updates. Let's uh, have a quick look at these now. The, the good information, the exciting one that I wanted to share specifically before we recap on 23C is the Zoom information. So the 2.0 version of the Zoom app, which again has been developed by the Oracle team, not by Zoom, but by the Oracle team. One of the key things that I think is going to be a little bit of a game changer for those of you who are using Zoom is that the app will now not just simply allow you to bring webinar information into Eloqua and manage that process, but also meetings. And we literally, like two or three months ago, we were planning a webinar for North America with a bunch of Oracle people. And um, what we were looking at was a small group. We're talking like six or seven people. And we thought it'd be great to be able to automate this whole process, but we didn't want to do it as a webinar because it's so impersonal to a degree with a group that size. You know, we wanted to be able to have everybody's photograph on the screen, you know, that, that typical Zoom meeting type of experience. But then I couldn't use Eloqua to actually manage the process of who registered and who didn't and who should we follow up, et cetera. Now I'll be able to do that. So I think it opens up a quite a new experience for those who are using Zoom, specifically looking at the, using Eloqua to manage that process for you, potentially on some of those smaller number type Zooms that you'd rather do as a meeting uh, and not as a webinar. So something to think about, which is kind of cool. So when... There's a process, you need to go into top liners um, and you need to fill in a form, et cetera. I'll have all of that information for you in the email following today's uh, user group. Well, not today, but within the next sort of five or six days, I'll get that through to you and it'll be in the blog post as well. Uh, if not, if you go into Zoom and just do a bit, sorry, go into top liners and do a bit of uh, searching, uh, I'm sure you'll find it. It's from Chris, which is one of the product development guys. Um, and he'll walk you through what that process looks like. But the 18th of September is when the app will be generally, uh, no, sorry, it will be available under controlled availability. Okay. 
So then just to recap on some of the other key things from release 23C, we did touch on these last month. Redwood Experience continues its uh, flow through the program or through the application. And so you can see the four new areas of Eloqua, settings landing pages, fields and views, external activity setup and email group setup. All of those have been um, changed uh, and are available in Redwood. So if you're looking into Eloqua at the moment and this is what you see on your screen, this is the current format. However, if Redwood has been made available to you, you access it through the hamburger menu on the left-hand side of the screen, and you'll see that Use Redwood Experience checkbox at the bottom of the screen. So when you click on the checkbox, Shazam, it doesn't animate as beautifully as that, by the way, but but you get the, get the story with the idea. And so here it appears uh, in front of you. So this is Redwood. Um, this is some of the, these are some of the newer screens that have been added. So the e email uh, group setup area has been changed. The settings area. So for the administrators who may spend a bit of time here, that's changed as well. Uh, fields, if you're working in fields, that's changed. Don't miss this little menu, by the way. Uh, so you may look at what's on screen and go, oh, hang on a minute. Where's the field population details? That's up here. So you need to click on the little three little buttons, uh, which will give you more information. And this one is one that's been a personal favorite of mine and one that I've been waiting for a while on. <laughs> this one enables you to set an expiry date and a time for eligible landing pages and then to redirect them. Now, the ability to redirect an eligible landing page is not new. You've been able to do that for a long time as long as I can remember. Um, what's new is the ability to set an expiry date and a time at, at which point that page will redirect. So if you think about events, which is kind of the easy one, obviously you would want that registration page to redirect to a, sorry, you missed our event, probably either, well, you arguably, you know, 10, 15 minutes before the event starts or, 10, 15 minutes after it starts, whatever kind of works, whatever's the smartest time for you to do that. If you think about a landing page that contains an offer of some sort that has an expiry date, it's so much easier to set that expiry date when you're creating the page than it is to have to remember to come back in uh, and, and set that expiry date on that particular page. So what does that look like and how does it work? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Here's an example. Um, you've seen this view a thousand times. So on the left-hand side there though, I've just enlarged that to make it a bit easier for you. Um, that concept of redirect, we've always had that, right? So you've always been able to do that. It's this portion here that is highlighted that is actually new. So you need to activate it with the toggle switch here, the blue button that's in the on position right now. And then we can nominate the expires on the date and the time. Uh, the URL that we want it to expire to or to redirect to, I should say, uh, and then select the relevant time zone to suit the time, obviously, in the date and time that you need to do. So, yeah, I'm getting to the habit now of actually setting this setting this up when I create registration landing pages. Just, yeah, it makes life a lot easier, uh, which is very cool. So that's something to, to look forward to. Well, that brings us to a close. We're actually just a few minutes early, so I'm happy to hang around for questions, but I uh, just wanted to let you know, next month, we're delighted to have Stephen Strike, who is the Group Vice President for Product at Oracle Marketing. Now, Stephen used to work for Eloqua a long time ago, so he's been around for quite a while, and uh, I think his input and value looking at the Oracle Cloud World event that is happening, I wanna say next week in Las Vegas, um, he'll be providing us with a little bit of a roadmap for Eloqua for 2024 and beyond, and sort of giving us a little bit of a rundown as to the, the key announcements, et cetera, that, that he saw and, and thinks will be relevant to us uh, as Eloqua users next month in October. So you can go ahead and scan that QR code and register now if you like, but of course you will receive an email invitation. So I uh, look forward to seeing you next month, but otherwise happy to hang around uh, for a moment if there are any questions and we can otherwise say goodbye. But thanks so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day, a good evening, and look forward to seeing you next month. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.